Make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And to never miss another lecture from Miracle, hit the bell icon to get regular updates on English literature. Hello and welcome to Miracle English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Professor Abha Sharma and these days I'm doing Poetry Critical Appreciation. So today in this segment I bring before you the critical evaluation of T.S. Eliot's most famous poem, Preludes. Yes, the same Eliot, the Nobel Prize winner, the contemporary of Eliot, and Auden, often known as uh, the group leader of the New Critics and the Lemon Squeezer, Aristotelians, his major work stands by as the modernist text, The Wasteland. Today we will do Preludes, which was written during 1910 or 11, but was published in the volume with Prufok and other observations in 1917. So preludes literally means what? Prelude, that is before, pre, before the play. And prelude is often uh, before the musical composition, before the main piece which comes up, the prelude is uh, played. Here it means prologue a curtain raiser, a window, a sneak where he is trying to give the picture of modern life. So he divides it into four little poems giving the different sequences of a single day. So let's do them one by one. Elliot in his first part gives the image of a winter evening. As the evening settles down, during winter, the smell of roasted meat spreads in the narrow lanes where people are returning back home from the offices. He gives an illusion of a cigarette as the smoky day is over and only the evening is left. And then the street is covered by the shower and wind overtakes the city. It's all muddy and dirty everywhere. The dry leaves, the waste newspaper are coming under the feet. The lower class society is reflected when he says the raindrops making loud noise falling on the broken window pane and the chimney pots too when the rain gains momentum. At the end of the street, a lonely horse cab is uh, standing and the horse irritatingly stamping on the feet and then the lamps are lighted in all the houses signifying the approach of evening. So in this stanza he gives the sight, the sounds, the smells, the dinner being cooked, the shower uh, going down the chimney pots, the wind blowing, the fallen leaves, the discarded newspaper, so, uh, the complete narration of the evening is there. The next stanza gives the image of a morning. The morning is as mechanical as evening. As soon as a man wakes up, that means he comes to consciousness, smelling of stale beer he must have taken last night. He rushes through the dirty street, trampling it more, towards the tea or coffee stalls and faking smiles and salutations to the acquaintances he meets in the way. With this the time resumes and then the women in the houses start their daily routine by raising their curtains to let the sunshine in. He talks about 
the thousand furnished rooms that means uh, he is talking about the modern life which is full of luxury but the life has become too much mechanical the third stanza has the same tone but the language is changed in direct second person addressed to a woman who was sleepless the whole night and she feels drowsy in the morning tosses the blanket in frustration and stays still for some time on the ceiling she visualizes several unhappy images of the past flickering before her eyes she realizes that she has been exploited and now the morning has made her conscious of her survival the day has started the sunlight is sneaking in through the gates and one can hear birds chirping in the dirty streets the same street which is exploited by being trampled by the footsteps of people and still it doesn't revolt or understand a striking similarity between a woman and street is drawn and the difference is that a woman is aware of her exploitation but the street is ignorant an artificiality is also reflected that the external beauty is more stressed than the peace of the soul the colors in the hair to enhance the looks and the yellow exhausted soles of feet rubbed by the hands in order to bring the body into action here the transition from night to day in a women's modern times is reflected in the last stanza the scene returns to the office where men got lost inside a big office building there at work he was exploited because of the overload of work bosses peer pressure the mechanical time went on and when it was 6 o'clock it was time to leave office so he starts smoking to relieve himself some read the newspaper and there's a very uh, nice line technically correct and i is assured of certain certainties we all know that newspapers are full of hackneyed news the same news is there every day but still we read the newspaper to make sure of its being there the corrupt black street is a metaphor for all unlawful activities which begin in the evening so all these activities are gearing up into action the poet evaluates the mechanical modern life which has no pause he begins with evening in the first stanza and in the fourth returns back to evening man being tied from evening to morning to evening but still has fanciful happy images of life he hopes to attain some eternal joy whereas the reality is in contrast he has to suffer eternally infinitely the last three lines say so forget everything ignore laugh try to enjoy for this world is like an old woman who's trying to gather fuel from nothing there isn't any happiness there isn't any peace still we keep on looking for it we anticipate happy days in future all the classical images of evening morning the routine of man and women they all gather to make preludes a curtain raiser for his forthcoming uh, epical poem the wasteland which was published in 1922 i hope you must have understood the poem in depth so please like comment share and subscribe and take care until we meet again with a new poem
Thank you.